Hello everyone, Shelly Longenecker here from Dinner for a Dollar. I hope this finds you well. We are doing well. Thank you for being patient with me when I rescheduled this live. Um, it has been like a thousand years since the stomach flu has worked its way through our family, but um, six out of seven of us got the stomach flu. So it's been eventful over here. So I wanted to thank you for being patient with me for extending the, um, for pushing the workshop to today. I am going to dive right in because this is going to be a meaty workshop. I am going to teach you the first three steps to take when you need to lower your food bill. So if you are listening to this and you need to lower your food bill, tune in because I'm going to teach you the first three steps that you need to take to get your food bill down. And then I'm going to close with teaching you how we can support you in that if you need that. But if you don't need extra support, these first three steps that I'm gonna teach you, you can do all on your own without any support, um, or you can choose to have us partner with you. So I see that Ashley's on and a few other people whose names I can't see. So I'll just say hi to Ashley and then I'm just diving right in. Okay, so the first step to when you need, that you need to take when you need to lower your food bill and this is gonna seem like it's not important, but it's actually the most important step. So I always start here. That is to know that it is possible to eat well on a tight budget. Know that it's possible to eat well on a tight budget. I always start here and here's why. Because if you believe that it's possible to eat well on a tight budget, your subconscious mind will create strategies to make that happen. If you believe that it's not possible to eat well on a tight budget, if you believe that you have to spend a lot of money to eat well, then your subconscious mind is not gonna create any solutions to help you eat well on a tight budget. And I don't know if any of you have heard of Roger Bannister, but he's the man who, the first man who broke the four minute mile and I should have looked this up before I started today, but no one had ever done it. They said it was impossible. They said the human body couldn't do it. You know, your heart would rupture if you ran that fast. He committed to breaking the four minute mile. Once he broke it, a ton of people broke it like within the next year or two. Knowing that it's possible allowed them to create strategies to be able to break the four minute mile. So I am here, break, I broke the four minute mile for you. <laughs> I'm telling you it's possible. For years, we served our family whole food, allergy free, produce rich diet for $1 per person per meal, for years. These last two years I was fighting cancer and honestly we stepped back from our dinner for a dollar system um, and we were just trying to survive. Um, and I actually just started my system back up. I went through my book and went through my system and started it again uh, 12 weeks ago. And I am getting back on track. Um, but we did that for years. I mean, probably seven years we served dinner for a dollar. So I know it's possible to eat well on a tight budget. Now, you might live in a high cost of living area and not be able to get down to $1 per person per meal like we can. Here where I live, we have pretty low food prices here and we also have a lot of competition. But you can lower it no matter where you live. Okay, now, I didn't always believe that it was possible to eat well on a tight budget. I'm gonna take just a few minutes to share our very quick dinner for a dollar story. Many years ago, probably 12 years ago, our son was diagnosed with an autoimmune disease of his esophagus. And we were quickly prompted to eat a whole food, allergy-free diet. And I remember when he got diagnosed, I came home and I told my husband how we had to eat. And do you know what he said to me? He said, I guess I need to go find a way to make more money because our food bill is about to explode. And it did. I believed, my husband believed, in order to eat well, we had to have a big budget. And for years, we lived like that. I never looked at our food budget. I never tried to save money. I never tried to save time. I also have a whole time, time savings training that I'll do, but not today. 
I thought to eat well, we had, I had to be in the kitchen all day and we had to spend a bunch of money on food. We lived like that for years. I never looked at our budget. And then we ran into some financial troubles and I had to cut our entire budget in half, like our whole household budget. And I looked at my husband and I said, I'm committed to cutting our food bill in half, but we can't compromise on whole food. We can't compromise on allergy free. We can't compromise on lots of produce. So I had to engage my brain to create a whole new plan. And that's what I did. I ended up creating a whole plan, which ended up turning into the dinner for a dollar system, but I never planned on selling it initially. So what did I do to take my food bill from $2,000 a month? That's what we were spending on food previously, $2,000 a month. You're probably not that out of control, but we were a large family eating very well with lots and lots of produce and allergy free, and we were spending $2,000. $1,200 on groceries and $800 on eating out. I cut that in half and got it down to $1,000 a month, $720 for groceries and about $250 for eating out, $280. What did I do to cut that in half? So the first step, anybody remember? Knowing that it's possible. That's your first step. Now, from there, what did I do? Okay, I evaluated my habits. So I sat down at my table with a notebook, a pen, my favorite beverage, and I did what I call the big girl panty time. <laughs> I pulled up my big girl panties, and I honestly evaluated my habits. I sat down and I said to myself, with no shame, this is not a shameful time. I objectively evaluated. I asked myself and I prayed and asked for wisdom. What am I doing that's leading to a food bill that is so outrageous, $2,000 a month? What habits do I have that are leading me to a $2,000 a month food bill. And I made, I just brainstormed for about an hour. I wrote down all the things that I thought were probably leading to my very out of control food bill. I called this process finding the holes in your boat. So I sat down and I wrote out, okay, what are the holes in my boat? Why am I spending $2,000 a month? And I, I wrote it all out. And I'm gonna give you an example of one of these things that I discovered. These actually eventually became my dinner for a dollar system, which went into my book and are going into my course. But one of the things that I realized were leading to my $2,000 a month food bill is I was throwing away lots of food every single week. I now know that the average American is throwing away 31% of the food that they purchase every single month. 31%. I now know that. I didn't know that then. I bet that we were throwing away that much. I'm going to do a teaching on this later in the um, week, but uh, the consumer price index came out in March and the consumer price index tells us how much prices rise or fall over the course of a year in every sector of the economy. This is U.S. based. In 2020, food prices on average nationwide across all categories of food, food prices rose 3.1%. So people are freaking out about rising food prices and food prices are rising. But meanwhile, 3.1% in 2020, meanwhile, we're throwing away 31% of our food. So food prices, we can't control, but everybody's freaking out about that 3.1%. Meanwhile, we're throwing away 31% of our food, which is 10 times more than the food prices have risen. So dinner for a dollar and what my big girl panty time and the find the holes in the boat time was all about me controlling the things that I could control that were leading to my elevated food budget. And food waste was one of them for us. If you're a typical American, it's probably one of them for you. So when I sat down, I asked myself, okay, I'm throwing away too much food. Why am I throwing away too much food? Okay, so 
this model that I'm showing you, I'm telling you my story because it will help you. When you sit down and you write out all the things that are causing you to have a food bill that are higher, you're evaluating your habits. If you discover that food waste is one of them, which it probably is, ask yourself, why am I throwing away food? Okay, now myself, I wrote down four reasons that I was throwing away food. Number one, I was buying too much food. <laughs> okay, this seems so obvious, but that's one of the things. I was buying too much food. Number two, I wasn't paying attention to my food once I bought it. Number three, I wasn't starting dinner soon enough in the daytime. And number four, I love good food. I love loving my family. One of the ways that I love my family is by making good food. So somewhere in my mind, love and food came together. And I thought to myself, more food, more love. <laughs> and obviously that's not a food saving principle, but I, as I was writing out my reasons for waste, I was like, you know what? I buy all this food because I love my family and I wanna feed them well. So those were four of the reasons that I was wasting too much food. Now let me tell you what I did next, and this leads you to step three. The first three steps you're gonna take when you're trying to lower your food bill. Number one, know that it's possible to eat well on a tight budget. Number two, evaluate your habits. Pull up your big girl panties with no guilt, no shame, and objectively evaluate what are the holes in your boat. Then number three, you make a plan to plug those holes, okay? So you're plugging the holes. In the big girl panty time, we found the holes. In step three, we're plugging the holes. So let's talk about the food waste, right? I'm showing this as an example for you. I had many other habits that were causing us to spend too much money, but one habit was wasting too much food. So I told you the reasons I was wasting. So in step three, you're creating a plan to solve those reasons that you're wasting. So my reasons, as a reminder, buying too much food, not paying attention to my food, not starting dinner on time, and love equals food. Okay, so now in step three, I'm making a solution for these. Number one, buying too much food. Okay, now, it's very easy to say, stop buying so much food. <laughs> but we have to take a look at strategies to help us buy less food. So I implemented a few strategies to help me buy the appropriate amount of food. And I'm just gonna share those with you right now. In my Dinner for a Dollar system, I actually help you walk through all of these. But a few strategies that I started doing that helped me buy the appropriate amount of food is, number one, I create a food inventory every time I shop put my hands on all the food that we already own in the pantry, in the refrigerator, in the freezer. You're probably thinking, wow, that takes a lot of time. Yes, it does. But most of us, now I'm not talking about food scarcity people, people who have food scarcity. There are a huge amount of Americans deal with food scarcity. That is not what I'm talking about here. I'm talking about most of you listening here probably have way more food than you think you do. So I recommend to reduce the amount of food that you buy doing a complete inventory. Once you get your food totally under control and you build a new system and everything is running really smoothly, you don't have to do a complete inventory every time you shop. But I recommend you do one for a long time until you build all new habits. And then I carry the inventory with me to the store. That way when I see a sale on, let's say ketchup, and I'm tempted to stock up, I look at my food inventory and I'm like, I already have 12 ketchups on my shelf. I don't need to buy more, right? Okay, so a food inventory is one way that I buy, stopped buying too much food. Another way that I stopped buying too much food is when I created my shopping list, I made quantifiable, list. So instead of saying apples, right, I would write down 12 red apples and 20 green apples or whatever. Instead of writing carrots, I write down exactly how many carrots I need to buy. 
because when I get there, I see those beautiful apples and I'm like, oh, I wanna buy all the apples. But if I buy more than my family can consume in the amount of time, then I, I'm gonna waste it. And then the third way that I changed buying too much food was um, by going to the store less. And I know that sounds really, really basic and super, super obvious, but the average American is going to the store two to three times a week. And when you are going to the store that often, you are more than likely buying too much. And that is actually one of our 11 steps is reducing your trips to the store. And in the book and in my course, we'll walk you through exactly how to reduce the amounts of time you go to the store. If you go to the store less, you are going to spend less and you are going to waste less. This seems super obvious, but it wasn't obvious to me for a very long time. And you have to build strategies to go to the store less. Okay, so buying too much. So I created strategies to buy less food. I just covered those with you. Do an inventory, quantify my shopping list, go to the store less. Those were three strategies that I built into my system to help me buy less food. Okay, one of the other reasons I was wasting food is I was not paying attention to my food. So I would buy food. You know, we've all seen the memes where, you know, food is rotting in our produce drawers, right? So I created a fridge check. And if you have been around dinner for a dollar very long at all, you've heard me talk about fridge check. I do a fridge check two times a week. A fridge check is every two to three days. Take two to three minutes, check your fridge, see what needs to be used up and make a plan to use it. Every two to three days, take two to three minutes, check your fridge, see if anything needs to be used up and make a plan to use it. You can tell I've talked about fridge check a lot. So a remedy for not paying attention to my food is by doing a fridge check. So I implemented that as a new habit in my life. I do it every Wednesday and every Saturday. It's just a simple thing for me. And now I do not lose track of my food. I basically realized that food waste comes from a lack of attention and a lack of intention. It's not that you're lazy. It's not that you're broken. It's not that you're screwed up. It's not that you can't figure out this adulting. You just have to find a system for paying attention and having intention for the food that you buy. And that will bring your waste down. Okay, my third reason I was wasting is I wasn't starting dinner soon enough. And then we would have to get takeout and that would rise our food bill way up. And so now I have a rule for myself. I rest every day. Uh, that's part of my anti-cancer plan. Um, I rest every day from 11 to one actually. Um, I think most of you probably don't have to do this, but when I get up for my rest at one o'clock, I make a plan for dinner. I know what I'm having for dinner. I pull out whatever I need to do. So if you're regularly finding yourself at 5.30 going, oh crap, what's for dinner? Set a time by which you must know what you're having for dinner and put an alarm on your phone. Maybe it's, for a long time I did it at breakfast. So at breakfast, we, we did breakfast cleanup and I made a plan for dinner and pulled out whatever I needed. That's a really good strategy. That's even better than one o'clock, but I'm not doing one o'clock right now. I mean, I'm not doing the breakfast one. Okay, and then the fourth reason that I was wasting was that I was equating food with love. <laughs> and so I recognized this about myself and when I'm at the store and I'm in the produce section, which is the most tempting section for me, and I see all of those apples and I want to buy them all because my family loves apples and I see them and I'm like, oh, they would love these. And I actually remind myself, oh, I have my list I only need 10 apples and I only need 20 green apples, you know, whatever. And then I just remind myself, that's all they need. And I can show them love with these apples in lots of other ways. So just recognizing it, I didn't really make a real plan about the food slash love thing, but I recognize it. That way when I'm in the produce section, I can tell myself, this is not, Buying more food is not how I show my family more love. I'll buy the food we need and then I show them love lots of different ways, including serving them through food. Okay, now 
before I leave this step, right? So we've covered number one step to lowering your food bill right away. You have to know it's possible to eat well on a tight budget. Tell yourself that. It's possible to eat well on a tight budget. I just need to figure out how. Your subconscious mind will start creating solutions. Number two, you sit down at the table with your big girl panties, your notebook, and a cup of something and a pen. And if you believe in prayer, pray for wisdom and then just lay it out. What habits am I doing that are leading to this large food bill? Just brainstorm, just write them down. And then step three, you're making a plan. You're gonna plug the holes in your boat. And I've just taught you how to plug the holes in your boat for one type, one habit, which is food waste. Now, here's my, I have two very strong recommendations for this process of making a plan to plug the holes. Number one, I really suggest you only plug one hole at a time. Okay, so dinner for a dollar is comprised of 11 steps, 11 steps to cut the amount of time, money, and mental energy you're spending on food. But I teach the people going through my course to just do one step a week at the most because here's the thing. I read a really good book called Atomic Habits. Actually, I read part of it by James Clear. Super good book. Talks all about how we create change in our life how we let go of bad habits and create new ones. And he talks all about small changes. Our nature, at least as Americans, I can't speak for other cultures, is all or nothing thinking. We think to ourselves, I wanna eat healthy. So we go and buy $200 of healthy groceries and we have no real plan to make that happen. And then we crash and burn and never eat, we don't even eat it, then we go get a pizza. It's like, well, I don't know how to eat healthy, so I'm just gonna have a pizza. That's all or nothing thinking. Like it's either pizza or it's like raw vegan. Well, there's a whole world in between pizza and raw vegan, right? Same thing with lowering our food bill. You think to yourself, like when my bill was $2,000 a month, let me tell you what I did. I said to my husband, I said, I'm gonna take the next 12 weeks, 12 to 16 weeks, and I'm gonna overhaul our food system. And I handled one habit at a time. We actually ended up taking 16 weeks, almost six months till I was totally done, honestly. And I just, I kept experimenting. I tried a step and I saw how that did. And then I tried another one. I have my master's in counseling and I was a therapist before. So I understand that change is hard. And when we take on too much at once, it honestly just creates failure. So I recommend that when you have written out those things, right? You've written out those things that are the holes in your boat. And then you've written out ways that you can plug those holes in the boat. Try one at a time. So you can approach that two ways. One, you can find the biggest hole in your boat and work on plugging that first. Or two, you can approach it by finding the smallest and easiest hole to give yourself some success and plug that first. Whichever you think would work better for you as a person. I'm an incremental kind of a person. It works really well for me to start small and work my way up. But you can do whatever. But the biggest thing I want to encourage you is you do one. Just one habit at a time. Okay, so I walked you through the three steps to lower your food bill. If you need to lower your food bill right now, these are the three steps that you can take. And you can actually do this all alone. What I just taught you, you can do. That's actually what I did to take our food bill from $2,000 to $1,000 a month. And I kept it there for years by doing those three steps. But you may want help. You may need help. You may want some more structure. You may want some support. You may want to use a proven system. That's why we're here at Dinner for a Dollar. I teach you as much as I possibly can for free. And it, I have a lot of resources available, lots of blogs, lots of lives, um, or you can just sit down with your big girl panties and your notebook and go through these three steps. But most people need more structure and need more support. In fact, research tells us that you are 95% more likely to hit your goals if you have support. 
if you have a community, if you have someone helping you. 95% more likely. That's a huge number. And that's why we're here. So what do we have available for you? We are just getting ready to open our doors. We only do this twice a year to our dinner for a dollar course. Actually, the course is available year round for 197, but twice a year, we lower the price to $97 and we add a 12 week group to do it together. So we are opening the doors right now today um, until June 10th at the $97 price to go through the $1, the dinner for a dollar course together in 12 week time period. Because here's the thing, you're not broken. You're not lazy. You're not stupid. <laughs> I wasn't broken. I wasn't lazy. I wasn't stupid when I was spending $2,000 a month. I just didn't know it was possible and I didn't know how to do it. And I didn't have any support. So we've created the Dinner for a Dollar course. It provides structure and support. I've already talked about the support 12 week program. The structure, let's talk about it. The Dinner for a Dollar course takes my whole dinner for a dollar system, the whole dinner in 15 minute system, puts it together with the 12 week group and we walk through your whole food system together. And it is proven to help you reduce the amount of money you're spending, reduce the amount of time in your kitchen, reduce the amount of energy you're spending on food and help you eat better. The average person saves $250 a month an hour a day in the kitchen, lots of mental energy, I don't know how to quantify that, and eats better. We just finished our first group going through it and all of the women saw tremendous changes. Their whole food life changed. They are sending me messages saying, everything changed about my food life. I'm spending less time thinking about it. I'm eating better. I'm spending way less money and I'm spending way less time in the kitchen, way less eating out, way less takeout, way less convenience foods. So I love hearing stories like that because that's exactly why I'm here. I'm here to help you eat well on a tight budget and a tight schedule. So like I mentioned, the course is available year round. It's totally self-paced. You can do it alone. Year round, it's 197. Twice a year in June and in January, I offer the course with a 12 week group program for half off. And that starts today. So, okay, now I'm done talking about the course. I will put a link where you can check the course out to see if it works for you. But this training today was meant to be a training that you can use all on your own. So if you don't have $97 right now and cannot do the course, or you don't know if that would be helpful, you can try these processes all on your own. I am available for questions. Um, I haven't seen any come through because I know this has been an active teaching, but if you have any questions, feel free to post them on this live and I will be around today to answer them. If you wanna know, hey, I sat down with my big girl panties and my notebook and my pen and I'm looking at my habits, You know, what do you think about this? How can I plug this hole, Shelly? Ask me questions. I'm here and available for you. My heart's desire is to provide information that will help you eat well on a tight budget and a tight schedule. And if you need more structure and support, we are available for that too. So please reach out if you need it. I'll put the link for the course for you to check out. But if you have questions, I'm here. Take care.